Hey there. Subscribe to my channel. And also press this bell icon. So you never miss any new updates cause whenever we upload new video you will get a notification on your phone. Hello students, in this video we will discuss about Chomsky's hierarchy. So basically Chomsky hierarchy is saying that uh, uh, the grammar is divided into four parts. Right? So according to Chomsky's hierarchy, grammar is divided into type 0, type 1, type 2 and type 3 grammar. Right? So what are these grammars? We will also discuss this about in details. Right? So watch the video until the end so that you can get each and every concept in very detail, right? So here is a type 0. Type 0 is also called as recursively innumerable language and it is of two types, right? So basically it is observed or recognized by Turing machine. So re recursively innumerable language that is a type 0 language is recognized by Turing machine which is of two types, deterministic Turing machine and non-deterministic Turing machine and the power of both DTM that is deterministic Turing machine and non-deterministic Turing machine is equals. Then next is type 1. Type 1 grammar is also called as context sensitive language, right? So the context sensitive language is recognized by LBA that is linear bound automata. Now this is also of two types deterministic linear bound automata and non-deterministic linear bound automata. If we concern about the power then we can't say exactly that which uh, whose power is greater right. Now the next type of grammar is type 2 grammar that is context free language. Context free language grammar is recognized by PDA that is push down automata. It is also of two types that is deterministic push down automata and non-deterministic push down automata and if we concern as of power then the power of NPDA that is non-deterministic push down automata is greater than deterministic push down automata. Then the type 3 grammar that is the regular grammar that is the most restricted form of the grammar is that and the, it is recognized by the finite automata. Now finite automata is cons consist of uh, two types that is DFA deterministic finite automata and non deterministic finite automata and the power of both DFA and NFA is equal here right and outside that no recursively innumerable means no automata is there right so basically if you will see grammars are basically of four types type 0 grammar type 1 grammar type 2 grammar and type 3 grammar right now let's see about detail about type 0, type 1, type 2, type 3, their formulation and their structure, right? That how they are recognized and what are the types of that and what are the syntax of that, right? So let's see about type 0, type 1, type 2, and type 3 grammar in detail. So initially we are taking type 0 grammar, right? So type 0 grammar is also called as unrestricted grammar, right? Or you can also say that it is known as recursively innumerable languages, right? It includes all formal grammar. So basically type 0 grammar consists of all formal grammar, right? So all the grammar whose we can form the automata is consisted under the right? So it is the bigger set of the grammar. Now it is recognized by Turing machine, right? And it is also known as recursively innumerable language. So initially we are taking type 0 grammar, right? So type 0 grammar is also called as unrestricted grammar, right? Or you can also say that it is known as recursively innumerable languages, right? It includes all formal grammar. So basically type 0 grammar consists of all formal grammar, right? So all the grammar whose we can form the automata is consisted under the track. So it is the bigger set of the grammar. Now it is recognized by Turing machine, right? And it is also known as recursively innumerable language. Now the grammar production of type 0 or REL is of the form alpha is to beta, right? So alpha tends to beta, where alpha is of the form v plus t star v and or v plus t star. What does it mean? V here is a variable, t is terminals, right? So you can repeat any variable and in ter any terminal any times you want. And here also in the end, variables and terminals any times you want, right? So basically, V is your variables and T is terminals and beta. Beta is the form V plus T whole star, right? So basically, for an example, if you will see, SPQ tends to QP and A tends to S. It is the form of 
type 0 grammar where s and a are the variables and p and q are the terminals right so i hope it is clear to you about type 0 grammar what is that alpha tends to beta where alpha is the form of that beta is form of that where b and p are variables for example s p q tends to q p and a tends to s right so it is type 0 grammar now let's see about type 1 grammar in type 1 grammar type 1 grammar is also called as context sensitive grammar right now type 1 grammar the grammar or the language which is generated by context sensitive grammar or type 1 grammar is recognized by lba that is linear bound automata now the rule that the grammar should be in type 1 or following the property of csg right or csl that is context sensitive languages that it must be in type 1 basically type 0 is must be in type 0 right basically type 0 is the superset and type 1 is subset of super, subset of that superset right so type 1 is under type 0 that is why it must be first of all follow the properties of type 0 then the production form is alpha tends to beta where the restriction is that alpha mode what we have discussed in our very first lecture that it denotes the length of that right so the length or the symbols or the characters in alpha should be less than or equals to beta for example S tends to A, B, A, B tends to A, B, C, D and B tends to B. So the character on the alpha that is left side is 1 which is less than beta A, B, right? Similarly, A, B characters in left side that is the part of alpha is less than A, B, C, D. Here characters, total characters are 4, here 2. Similarly, B tends to B, it is also right because here equals 2 is also there, right? So the character on left side should be less than or equals to characters on right side. So it is the restriction that, that, that are put on the type 1 grammar which is context sensitive grammar right. So we are discussing here the type 1, type 0 and type 2, type 3 grammar basically for the Chomsky's hierarchy. In our upcoming lectures we will also discuss this grammar as per the procedure of the following grammar questions and the questions that are asked in your exams right so let's see the next type of grammar that is type 2 in type 2 grammar basically type 2 grammar is called as context free grammar right or cfg now the language which is recognized by type 2 grammar or the are by non deterministic push down automata right so push down automata recognize the language which is generated by cfg Basically, the language which is generated by CFG or the context-free grammar are called as context-free language and it is recognized by non-deterministic push-down automata. Basically, you can also say that push-down automata recognize the language which is generated by type 2 grammar or CFG. Now, if you will see the restriction that I have put in the type 2 grammar, it should be first in type 1, right? So, it is the subset of type 1. Similarly, if it is a subset of type of type 1, then it is also subset of type 0 because type 0, then type 1, then under type 1, type 2 is there, right? And there is no, first of thing, the alpha, length of alpha is equal to 1. What does it mean? The elements that is on the left side should be consisted only of one character, right? One symbol. So left side uh, symbol only of the length 1 and there is no restriction on beta, right? So on the right side, there isn't any restriction. For example, S tends to RJ, R tends to R and J tends to J. Here capital S, R and J are the variables and small R and J are the terminals, right? So if you will see here, the left side symbols that is S, R, J are only consistent of single length character, right? So that are the restrictions that are put under the type 2 grammar or context free grammar, right? So it is all about type 2 grammar and it is uh, recognized by PDA. Now let's see about the type 3 grammar. Type 3 grammar is also called as regular grammar, right? It is, it is basically the most restricted form of grammar. Why it is so? Because if you will see here in Chomsky's hierarchy, type 3 is put under the type 2 and type 2 is put under type 1 and type 1 is put under type 0. So this is the superset, basically type 0 is superset which consisted all the formal languages that can be generated by automata right and outside that the non-generated languages are there right undecidable undecidable it is there and it is under decidable problems right under that also type 3 is put under the uh, in the center right so basically it is the most restriction form of the grammar and it generates regular languages 
Now grammar production of type three or regular grammar are of the form v tends to v t star in t star means v is variable here and t is terminal here. So v tends to v t star or t star or v tends to t star or v or t star. Basically v and t are here variables and terminals, right? In this you can put any variable here and you can repeat any terminal here or after that you can also put any terminal here any time. Here in this variable is there, terminal is there means you can put any terminal a, b, c like that and b variable and after that you can put any terminal here, right? For example, v tends to rj, it is the example of regular grammar, right? And it is the type of regular languages that is generated by the regular grammar or type 3 grammar, right? So I hope the Chomsky's hierarchy which we have discussed in this lecture are clear to you. Further, if you have any kind of queries or doubts, you can comment us and we will try to solve your doubts and queries as early as possible. Thank you so much guys. Have a nice day. Jai Hind. Jai Bharat.